So as an iPad first user, iPad OS 16 was actually a very welcome update because it was the first time that Apple really acknowledged that there were users like myself that like to use the iPad as their main form of computer, whether it is for leisure, for productivity, or everything in between. So updates like Stage Manager, Extended Monitor Support, and even apps like Freeform were all great additions to iPad OS 16 to kind of get us closer to what a iPad can be from a computer standpoint. And it really started to close the gap between iPad OS and Mac OS, even though they still are very different to a lot of people. So what I wanna talk about in this video is what my expectations are for iPad OS 17 and what Apple can do to get more and more people onto the iPad game because iPad OS 16 was a great evolution, but it really only was noticed by people like myself that really use the iPad and push it to that computer-like use case versus somebody that uses their iPad as more of a throw around tablet. You know, if you have an iPad mini or an iPad 10 generation, you wouldn't really tell the difference or really know that there was a big update with iPad OS 16 because you're not using Stage Manager, you're not using extended monitor support. But if iPad OS 17, let's say, would bring that down to other iPads, maybe more people could take advantage of it. But let's talk about my iPad OS 17 wish list. Let's get into it. So obviously the first thing we gotta talk about about an iPadOS 17 wishlist is Stage Manager. So Stage Manager did come to iPadOS 16 and it gave us the ability to finally have at least some sort of semblance of floating windows and the ability to have more than just two applications open at one time. So Stage Manager allows you to have up to four free flowing windows in one view and have up to 16 apps open at one time when you include that little side shelf on the left hand side of your screen that kind of groups together all these applications. Now if you're coming from Mac OS and you expect it to be a complete one-to-one -one transition Transition, then you're gonna be mistaken. It's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. There's still some nuances you need to learn with Stage Manager, like being able to have those floating windows, the fact that those floating windows, even though yes, there's a lot of different sizing options, it's not infinite and it still kind of fits onto a certain grid and a certain style that Apple likes. And then the inertia also moves the windows in a weird way. It's not kind of like you leave the window there, you set it and forget it. If you open another window, then that other window will move out of the way to make room for it. So there's still a lot going on and it's kind of the iPad way of how Apple wanted to do the floating windows. So with all those new additions and this new feature set all of a sudden, there was a bit of confusion when especially the average consumer went to go use Stage Manager. If they accidentally toggled on the Stage Manager toggle on the control center and their windows were floating all of a sudden, then people got a little bit confused and they didn't know what to do because it was very different to what they were used to and also it wasn't similar enough to Mac OS that it was easy to comprehend. So Parker over on Twitter put together a nice little concept of what Apple could do to make Stage Manager a little bit more inviting and a little bit user friendly. So the first part is having a, some sort of mission control. Because when you go to multitasking right now and you have your floating window section, you also have your non-floating window section. So your Stage Manager apps that are open and your non-Stage Manager apps, it's a little bit confusing. So having some sort of mission control to let you know like, hey, these are the applications on the bottom that are in full screen. These are the applications taking advantage of Stage Manager. These are the applications that are kind of in iPhone mode that make Stage Manager a little bit more easy to navigate overall. And also Parker brought up this idea of tidy stages, which again, is kind of like a combination of Stage Manager and then also the split view that we've always known since iPadOS 12, I wanna say, or iPadOS 11, but being able to break it up into more than just side by side. So maybe having three windows or four windows, but all in a grid that you previously create and it fits for those applications. So for instance, for Twitter, you don't need an entire window for Twitter. You can just have a little side view and then maybe for Safari, you need a little bit of a bigger window. Having that screen real estate ratio and you splitting it up how you see fit is a great way to actually implement Stage Manager with iPadOS 17. And then also being able to use what iPadOS 16 does by using focus modes to determine what views you want out of Stage Manager and what applications you want out of Stage Manager. Because right now, focus modes, even though you can turn them on on the iPad, it doesn't nearly do as much as it does on the iPhone itself. So making Stage Manager a little bit more user-friendly is the first step that I think Apple needs to take to make iPadOS 17 more adoptable overall and more in the mainstream. Because right now, there's not a lot of people using Stage Manager over just the regular UI of the iPad. The next thing I wanna talk about is a redesigned lock screen. So Parker also put something brilliant together, which was this idea of bringing the iOS 16 lock screen over to iPadOS 17. And this wouldn't be the first time Apple does something like this. For instance, Apple introduced the app library back in iOS 14, and then with iPadOS 15, they introduced it to the iPad lineup as a brand new feature, which is something that, again, is a little bit weird because it was an old feature just brought over to the iPad one year later. So the same thing could apply to the lock screen of the iPad bringing over the lock screen widgets, the ability to use focus modes to change the lock screen, and then also bringing back the 
original today view and how that works, being able to pin the today view must be something that a lot of people would want out of their iPad lock screen. Because right now, the iPad lock screen, it's got nothing going for it aside from notifications. So being able to have maybe the today view with your most used widgets, so being able to see weather, your time, your calendar, but then also being able to use those lock screen widgets that Apple brought over to iOS 16 on the iPhones would be a great addition to the lock screen itself. And then to keep going with this, let's go into the home screen after the lock screen. With the home screen itself, there's still a little bit that could be done on the home screen. So for instance, right now we're still working with, with that top left to bottom right grid that Apple has done with their apps for forever. But Apple did add the ability to add widgets onto the home screen of the iPad, which is great to an extent, but then also not being able to fully customize where you put it on the screen is a big miss in my opinion. So what I would love out of an iPadOS home screen or iPadOS 17 home screen is more customization. So for instance, bringing back the today view and bringing able to pin it onto your actual home screen is something that I wish Apple kept from iPadOS 13 because I remember when iPadOS 13 gave us a today view and then I pinned it to the home screen, it made me feel like I was using a different experience or a different operating system versus just a larger version of iOS. So bringing that over, making it seem more desktop-like would be great. And some other things that I would love to see Apple bring over to the home screen is the ability to add also folders and files directly onto the home screen as if they're an application. So for instance, if you're working on a Word file or a PowerPoint or some sort of PDF that you're going back to it a lot of the time, it'd be great to just be able to pin that file onto your dock or pin it onto your home screen for easy access. And then when you're done, you just put it back into a folder and you're good to go. Same thing goes with any folders to be put on the home screen. That would be great. And then also bringing those lock screen widgets, those smaller lock screen widgets over to the home screen was something that I would love to see both on iPadOS and iOS 17. Parker also has a great example of some more in-depth and kind of supercharged context menus on a per app basis. So if you long press on something like Safari, you get a bunch of different shortcuts, maybe your previous history and a lot of other things that are easier to view and easier to access and easier to, again, just manipulate whenever you need to by adding more context menus inside of an application. So if you long press on an application that you use very often, it'll know what you use in that app most often and then give you the correct context and be able to kind of, again, make your life a little bit more efficient overall. And now let's briefly talk about the Apple Pencil 2. So the Apple Pencil 2 has been exactly the same since 2018. It's got the same form factor, the same features for the most part. Nothing really has changed from the Apple Pencil 2 in the last five years, which is something Again, that baffles me because Apple's still selling it for $130. But Parker envisions a new kind of situation because Apple did bring over this new hover feature for the M2 iPad Pro, which again, there isn't a ton of use case. For me personally, the only use case I've seen with this new hover feature is to show you a preview of where you're about to erase something, maybe on your notes or inside of Affinity Photo. But outside of that, I haven't used the actual hover feature. I haven't seen a real good use case. Some people have seen other use cases overall, but they're very far and in between. So now taking that hover feature and adding more context menus around the actual Apple Pencil is something that Parker sees kind of coming forward in the future. So Parker's calling this the Apple Pencil Dial and it's similar to what the S Pen does. So if you hover the pencil over a certain context menu or over a certain application or over a certain portion of the actual screen itself, it's gonna give you different shortcuts that are relevant to that situation itself to make it easier to actually get stuff done overall, which I actually would welcome. And something like Affinity Photo and their notes application, instead of having the palette down there or the palette on the right hand side of whatever application, maybe bring the pencil close to whatever subject you're about to touch on and then the actual dial opening up and letting you get your actual shortcut keys there as soon as possible is actually a great little addition and I'm sure Apple is working on something like this with the hover feature. I think the hover feature was just a proof of concept and then people are going to be able to build on that hover feature with a lot more stuff. And then some other things that I would want to see, this is kind of like an honorable mention section. The first thing that I do want Apple to fix is the audio situation. So if you plug into an external monitor, Apple by default makes the speaker or the audio go through that speaker system. So if you have a monitor without speakers, you won't be able to actually get any audio from the iPad or from the monitor. You gotta use headphones or a Bluetooth speaker or something like that, which is kind of a detriment. And then also in the audio space, being able to use two audio sources at once. So let's say for some reason you have an audio book playing, but then you also have maybe some background music playing at the same time. Right now you cannot do that on the iPad. Whenever one audio source starts playing, it turns off the other audio source. So, so hopefully Apple can do something. I don't know if that's baked into the OS itself and that's something that's a little bit harder than it seems to fix, but it's something that I, like, kind of seems like Apple could fix pretty easily. And then two more things that I would love to see Apple do real quick is giving us a clamshell mode. In order for you to use extended monitor support with the iPad Pro, the iPad Pro needs to be in an on position and it cannot be locked and it cannot be turned off. So the second you close your screen on the Magic Keyboard, or lock the screen itself, then the secondary display also turns off. And then lastly for me would be the ability to use a secondary display as well. So maybe having two secondary displays or two external displays to work off of your single iPad would be awesome because right now you're limited to just one display. 
and that a display can be a tiny 15 inch display or a huge 49 inch ultra wide display and it'll still work great but it would be nice to have two separate displays that could be used and powered by the iPad Pro. So that is pretty much going to do it for this video everybody. This is my iPad OS 17 wishlist. Some of these are more realistic than others and some probably need a little bit more work and some of them are just kind of easy fixes that I think Apple should implement from a quality of life perspective but let me know in the comment down below what you think about iPad OS 17. What do you expect out of it? Is it going to be a lot of changes or more of a refinement period because iPadOS 16 brought a lot of changes, especially for the upper and higher level iPads. As I mentioned earlier, if you have an older iPad 9th gen or 10th gen or the iPad mini, then you might not see some of the improvements that we saw with iPadOS 16. So bringing the iPadOS 16 improvements to other iPads on iPadOS 17 would be a great addition as well. But that's going to do it, everybody. Leave some comments down below of what you think Apple should do with iPadOS 17. And if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch some more iPadOS, iOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. And I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.